Yo, so I'm Ross from Matador. I'm here with Jure from Adventure Slovenia. This is a good friend of mine for six years who's always pissed that I've never been to his country and now it's time to change that. Uh, we just arrived to Bled, which is one of the most um, popular spots in all Slovenia. We went to Lake Bled, which is just, I mean, the most picturesque postcard looking lake you've ever seen. How much time do you need for a proper trip through Slovenia to see? Uh, we suggest like eight, nine days. It's the most. You need to see the everything. But Slovenia is such a small country. In this year, we had really good winter, so we were skiing like last week and uh, um, go and pick up cherries in the wine region Barda, Griška Barda, which is like Slovenian Tuscany. And then you go to swim in Adriatic in matters of one hour and a half. You were saying it's like the size of New Jersey, yeah. right? It's yeah. like the and size of the state of New us. Jersey. Super clear water, like, you know, Emerald Bay and like Tahoe kind of water where you can see all the way to the bottom. You can safely swim all the way out to the island. There's this super picturesque island with a church on it. Amazing water to swim in. Then we went to the Adriatic and we went sailing on an Elan GT5 sailboat, which is badass racing boat. Um, they don't have a lot of coastlines. So you basically do like, you know, hour lap um, up and down the coastline, checking out these really cool coastal cities. You actually get to learn how to sail from these people who are really good at it. It's so much fun. The water is just like glorious to swim in. David was wonderful, and Maya, our skipper, did an incredible job as well. Everybody, thank you. Fala, fala. From there, we went to Socha Valley, which is, to me, unquestionably is the capital of adventure for Slovenia and outdoor. It's, think of like Chamonix, but condensed down to a much smaller valley, but all the same um, accessibility of adventure. One, two, three, into paddle. mountain biking, we went canyoning, we did a waterfall hike at sunrise. Um, all this stuff is like 20 minutes from the hotel. So it was just an incredible uh, experience going there. Staying at this beautiful hotel called the Dobra Villa. We are about to go sit down for dinner and have a multi-course dinner menu with wine pairings. And Vine, aka the second house. To nice. health. <laughs> so the orange wine is made as red. That means when they crush the grapes, the skin contact leaves out the, the tannins and becomes orange. The longer you macerate, the more orange it is. It's really fine with um, uh, the pate. Mm. Last night, no, yeah. it's really fine. Yeah, it's the attention to detail in everything in that hotel is incredible, but the food and eating from the breakfast to the you know tasting menu dinners were just insane. I, I had never really heard of Slovenian cuisine before, um, but you'll find out very quickly that, and, and I figured we'd probably have a bunch of good dinners. I had no idea the scale of the amazing food that we would have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and, and, and this is really important. We put inside uh, uh, the sea salt, spices, wine, cognac. Not secrets. He's taking us to these different rooms where he ages salami for different amounts of time. Oh man, that feels good. That feels great. <laughs> okay, <it's an> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we just had some of probably the best salami I've ever had in my entire life. Well, thanks again. See you All right, man. Bye. Thank you. The adventure continues. We're super fired up. About to go meet Ana Roche in, um, at the Hicha Franco. Super amazing restaurant. She's uh, number one female 
chef in the world right now. So, pretty excited. Here she is. Oh, here she is. We got to hang out all afternoon, get the inside perspective of her cooking style and how she started the restaurant, her whole story, which you can see, you know, part of on Chef's Table, but is different when you're actually talking to her in person. I was, as a young girl, a skier and a dancer, but also very good at school. I was doing uh, linguistic high school, and then later I decided to study international science and diplomacy in Italy, in the University of Trieste. And um, when I finished my university, I uh, met my husband, and they had this place. And uh, this is how I totally disappointed my parents and decided to stay in the valley and not going to Brussels um, for a diplomatic career. So um, I didn't go to the kitchen right away. I helped managing the place. I worked in the service. But then there was a kind of a crossroad. So since my husband was strongly in the wine business, um, the only chance was me. And I'm always confused when I go travel. They're promoting farm to the table food. For us, it's normal, you know, to come from the farm to the table. That's our way of life. It's part of us. You can't talk about food in Slovenia without talking about wine because obviously they go hand in hand and we just had incredible experiences. I would say easily um, the most incredible experience of my life with wine. I want that you learn one thing. It doesn't exist Slovenian wine or German or Californian. It's a wine from a person. This is wine which our family produce and because of that maybe is special. This was just different because it wasn't the cookie cutter, quote unquote, wine taste. Sitting down with the founder of this, this, this biodynamic winemaker, learning about what makes their wine different, why Slovenian wine is different. And then you'll go down and taste their personal uh, selection from, you know, go down and, and check out their whole process. Um, so that was extremely special to me to hang out with Alex and Alesh, get to kick it with them for the whole afternoon from these very high profile chefs, very high profile winemakers, and then just like the camaraderie we built with the folks that took us sailing, that, that took us out on these adventure sports. Um, the people were incredible. We left here with a bunch of new friends and I can't wait to come back.